Hello, Pathfinders. I pray that this geocaching honor that we're about to experience together is of a benefit to you and to your leadership team at Pathfinders. Um, it's summertime almost for many of you, and maybe that will give you a chance to get out of doors and experience something new while at the same time um, respecting and honoring the rules in your state or province or community um, regarding COVID-19. Regardless, I pray that this geocaching is, a, is, a, is fun for you sooner or later. Now in this um, series, this tutorial, you will learn all the learning requirements that you need to do. The only things that you will have left to do outside of the time we spend together is to discuss the Bible texts and to go out and actually practice caching. Now what you should do is either take a test with your instructor on the terms and words and ideas that you've learned, or when you're in the field, take a video, do some way of recording, um, showing that you know what these words and things mean in real life as you geocache. That's usually how I do it when I take a group out geocaching. I usually have them tell me all about what they are doing. Use the app, use the vocabulary, do some of the different kinds of geocaches that are available. That way you can earn by doing instead of just by testing. That's perfectly legit. But be sure you touch base with your instructor, the person who's going to sign you off and order the honor patch for you to make sure that whatever way is acceptable to them and lets them know that you've truly learned something. By the way, my name is Mark Ophel. I'm a lifelong Pathfinder. I have been a Pathfinder staff member for 31 years now. I have taught hundreds of honors. I've taught hundreds of, hundreds of children how to geocache, as well as many of my own family. In fact, recently, um, I celebrated my 10,000th geocache find. That was a big day for me. I come to you as the North American Division Honors Task Force Chairperson. What does that mean? That means that we look at the different submissions for new Pathfinder honors that come our way each year that are mailed to our office. And we try to provide brand new honors for you to earn and learn about each and every year. Maybe your club, maybe your director, maybe somebody you know have submitted an honor and had it approved. If so, you know someone special. Enough about me though. Let's get into geocaching. This is the geocaching honor that was approved by the North American Division in 2018. It is more up to date than the 2005 edition honor that is approved for general conference use. Basically, we have updated all the different tools and made it app centric instead of device centric, which was the old way of doing geocaching. Um, this presentation will be available on social media and a variety of platforms, including NAD Pathfinders YouTube, this along with many other training sessions for different honors and different types of leadership training are available on our YouTube channel. If your instructor needs answer keys for this honor or for many, many, many others of the 600 plus honors that are available, they can go to wiki.pathfindersonline.org. My team is proud to announce that we even have the latest and greatest biosafety honor complete with all the answers available on wiki.pathfindersonline.org. Maybe after you earn the geocaching honor, maybe biosafety is the next one you earn. Yes, you can see we cache during COVID-19. Masks are part of our caching equi equipment. 10,000 finds. Woohoo! Let's dig right in. Requirement number one 
let's define geocaching. Here's the fancy definition. It is an entertaining world, real world international outdoor adventure game for GPS enabled device users. Now, the basic idea is that individuals and organizations set up caches all over the world. You'd be surprised where you find one, even on the South Pole. Yes, there is. And share the locations of these caches on the internet. Geocachers then use the location coordinates to find the cache containers. Once the geocacher signs the log, they may log the find on the app or website for geocaching.com. Yes, to put it simply though, Geocacher, geocaching is people using million dollar satellites and a phone app with GPS technology to hunt and find plastic boxes hidden in the woods. How's that for a definition? Or to put it simply, geocaching is people using million dollar satellites and a phone app with GPS technology to hunt and find plastic boxes hidden in the woods. How's that for an easier to understand definition? Okay, now on for requirement number two. Identify the technological tools necessary for geocaching. Now, back in the old days, there used to be some major investment required in order to be able to become a geocacher. You had to buy a four to six hundred dollar piece of equipment, such as the gold um, unit right here. That is a Garmin um, unit that probably cost six hundred dollars back in the day. Nowadays, it's simply downloading a free or four dollar four and a half dollar app and signing up for a um, subscription. The basic membership is free and provides enough access to get started. A premium membership costs a little bit, $20, $30 a year, but enhances the overall experience. There are two great apps out there for this lower cost um, way of doing things, Cashly and then the standard geocaching app. Both can be found in your app store. Cashly can only be found on the iPhone app store. Other tools used for geocaching, TOTT, you'll sometimes find in logs, that's tools of the trade. Um, that may be such things as a pin or hook to get small logs out of small cache containers. That might be pen or pencil, a replacement log if something has gotten damp. Um, of course, you also have the normal tools needed for hiking, which is what the rest of the list is. Boots, good closed toes shoes, jeans or long pants, bug spray, especially for tick control, and maybe even sunblock, weather appropriate jackets, gloves, rain gear, flashlight, and other hiking gear. One of your requirements says, I believe it's number 12, says what do you need to keep safe? All the things you would need for hiking. You should have a map. You should have a plan. You should have water. You should have some food. You should stay away from cliffs. You should be aware of briars and brambles and cliff edges and those kinds of things. Yeah, those are all what I consider tools for geocaching. You might even add to this list brain power, logic. Yes, very important. Requirement number three, define or identify the following geocaching terms. Container, logbook, cache owner, coordinates, muggle, Smiley or find, caching name, geonic, username, all kind of the same thing, login, same thing, or travel bug, geocoin. I've got some videos that will help you um, with some of these vocab words, um, but first let's actually define them, then we'll go to the videos. A container is the box that is the geocache. A logbook is the piece of paper or small notebook where geocachers sign their caching name. The cache owner is the person who put the cache container where it is, maintains it, and lists it on the caching website. A muggle is someone who doesn't geocache but might want to mess up the game if they see what you are doing. Coordinates, often abbreviated cords, are the numbers that satellites use to find your position 
on a world map, and they are listed in degrees, minutes, and seconds. Latitude and longitude. Smiley or find is how you indicate that you found the cache online at geocaching.com. Your caching name or login is the name used to sign the log sheet and to log um, your find on the geocaching app or website. Like, I'm Pathfinder Mark. That's my caching name. Okay, you ready for a video that shows you real life how some of these vocabulary words are used? Okay, let's go. Hello, cachers and future Hello. geocachers. One more cache that I'm at. I'm at ground zero, often called GZ, and that's where your longitude and latitude coordinates match um, where you are actually located. You've probably heard about longitude and latitude in geography or social studies class. East and west, north and south, where that all matches. I'm within six feet, so probably the same longitude and latitude as that box, which is the container that we have found. Okay, so this container, just like other containers I've shown you, are owned by cash owners, COs. Those are the people that are responsible for making sure that the things inside and around the cache stay safe and dry and all of that good stuff. Take care of the containers. Okay, so this is a special, this is a traditional container. It's actually where the ground zero points to. You don't have to solve it for anything. You don't have another stage where you have to go somewhere. It is where it says it is. We are at ground zero with the CO. Now, this one's right out in the open. Um, I want you to look around in this parking lot here at the library and see so you have banks and all kinds of stuff all over. During some business hours, this would be huge, what's called muggle territory, which means there's all kinds of people that could be watching you cash. I'm here on a Sunday evening during COVID-19, so nobody's here, so there are no muggles to watch me cash, just my family. That's ideal, Sunday evenings, weekends, um, off peak hours, all great times to cash. Sometimes though, you gotta cash or you only have time to cash when other people are around, so there's great ways to play pretend like you're doing something else other than caching. Anyway, it's all to fool the muggles. Okay, you ready to figure out this, this container? This is one of those gadget caches I've told you about before. You'd think that it was the batteries and buttons. Maybe push the right buttons in the right order. Oh, where's buttons there? Nope, it's not there. Maybe it's there. No, maybe it's the button right here. Oh, maybe it's a switch underneath. Nope, no switches. Maybe it's these. Maybe this silly old door. Nope, guess what it is. Are you ready? Are you ready? Watch this. There's a rock down here. All I have to do is kick the rock and down it goes. Inside is the log. And like I've told you before, the only way that you can say that you have signed this, um, that you have found this container is by signing the log, just like I did. My caching name is Pathfinder Mark. And so I signed it Pathfinder Mark um, on this date in 2020, Pathfinder Mark. So that means that I have found this cache, I've signed the logbook, I can then go into my app and turn it into a smiley, which is my way of showing on um, the geocaching app or Cachely app or on the computer at home that I have found and I can record finding this wonderful cache. Another vocabulary term is travel bug, also called a keychain or geocoin. Um, that can be picked up from one container and dropped off in another container. It gains miles for each exchange. You may find one of these trackables, that's what another word for them, in a smaller regular size container that you visit. If you find one, it's helpful if you have one to trade for it that you can leave so it can get mileage. But in many cases, you want to just take the trackable if you know you're going to be going to another geocache soon where you can help it build mileage because it builds up or gains mileage every time it travels from one cache to another. I like to pick up coins, especially when I am headed to an event that is a state or maybe a couple of states away because I know that way I can take it to that event, find a whole bunch of other geocachers 
and we can trade the, our coins that we have picked up, coins or track of other trackables, the old classic keychains and whatever, and we can get them mileage. Some have goals to go around the world, to go to all 50 states, to visit as many countries as possible, to land in a certain state or certain region, to make it to the town of somebody's birth, all kinds of goals. Many times those goals are written on the web page that is associated with each travel bug's um, tag number. Each of them has a distinct code printed on the back of the coin or on the keychain. In fact, the video I want to show you right now will zoom in and help you see a little bit more. Warning, there are some unique travel bugs out there. Enjoy. Requirement number four, define and give examples of the different sizes of geocaches. Containers. Geocachers come in all sizes from those the size of a large pencil eraser and as large as a school locker or building. Yeah, that's a lot of different sizes. What is important is that the container is waterproof and weatherproof, can be opened and closed multiple times, and can hold at least a paper log for geocachers to sign when they find the geocache. Now we're going to discover some different sizes of uh, geocaches. The app and the website both give you designations to give you a clue about what size of item you are looking for. And these are the terms that they use to describe. There will be a quiz, online quiz of course, after this part of the presentation. So be ready to think what are the different types of sizes? Here's the first one. An extra small, also called a micro or a nano. There's some pictures there to give you kind of an idea. These are used a lot in urban geocaching. That means in cities and suburbs where there are lots of people. They range in size from a nano. There's the nano right there between the guy's thumb and forefinger. There's also bison tubes film canisters, key magnets, and similar size containers. They are all smaller than a man's billfold, some much smaller. But that's the size extra small, micro, or nano. Small. Small containers are used in some urban, many suburban, and even country geocaching settings. These containers are similar in size to a man's billfold. Small lock and lock and Rubbermaid containers 
or recycled pill bottles. Make great small sized containers. These may be the most popular size out there, maybe. Medium or regular sized containers. These are the classics. They are most often used in rural, woods, or park geocaching. They are the size of a large lock and lock or the classic ammo box style container. Kids like yourselves may really enjoy this size. First of all, they're usually easier to find. Second of all, they're out in the woods. And third of all, they contain toys to trade. Yep, trade even, trade up, or don't trade. So take along with you some of those penny store kind of things. Maybe it's some pretty pencils. Maybe it's some other tools. I'll give you a video later that shows you some other things that you could choose. But take along something, especially if your app tells you that you're going to have the chance to find a medium or a regular size geocache. Then, of course, there's large geocaches. There aren't very many of these. The original geocache would have been considered a large container. It was a five-gallon bucket in the woods near Portland, Oregon. Now, five-gallon paint buckets, old coolers, treasure chest, large treasure chest like I'm standing in front of there, and even storage lockers all fall into this category. These are relatively rare and can be very unique hides. Then there's a category called other. Virtual caches and earth caches fall into this category, as well as odd sized things like maybe a super small Ziploc attached to a metal lawn ornament or maybe a PVC pipe that is mostly buried underground. These don't fit the normal designations and so they are categorized as other. We'll talk about what virtuals and earth caches are soon. So hang tight. On the geocaching app, you can actually filter your, your um, searches so that you're only searching for one or more of these types of geocaches. You may eliminate, for example, other and extra small if you're wanting the ones that are most likely to have toys in them. You'll have to drive a little bit further, but you may have a richer experience. But the app allows you to sort by container size. Okay, it is cash size quiz taking time. I want you to shout out the size you think this container is. You can get some extra credit if you can name what type of container that we are showing. You ready? Let's go. What size is it? Shout it out. Oh, did you get a small and did you call it a pill container? Oh, maybe you got two points on that one. Let's try the next one. What is it? Yeah, it's a key magnet. It's another small, micro extra small actually. It's a little bit smaller than our pill bottles. What size is this one? He's holding it. Yep, small and lock and lock. You got this. What size is this one? Yes, the whole thing. Oh, I heard you shouting it out. Large, and yes, it is a storage locker. Hmm. What do you think? Do you have this one? Other? And if you got Earth Cash, man, you should give yourself two extra points for that because we haven't even really talked about Earth Caches yet. How about this one? What size is this one? You're right, micro or extra small. And that's a nano or a micro bison. What about that one? You're right, that's a regular or medium and that is a classic ammo box. So what was your score? Seven sizes, seven descriptions. Did you score 14? Oh, should I say 15 since that Earth Crash was worth two extras? 15 points? Did you get all 15? I hope you did.
Okay, requirement number five. Define and identify on a caching map the following types of geocaches. Traditional, multi-cache, mystery or puzzle cache, virtual, earth cache, where I go, or letterbox. Do you have your pencil sharpened? Here we go. Those are what the icons look like on your geocaching app or on the website. Traditional cache. The green box, the most common type. This is the original cache type, consisting at a bare minimum of a container and a logbook. Now, any of these types can be any size. This just talks about how you go about finding them. And this is simple. You go to the coordinates listed in the app or on the website, and there's your container, if you can find it. Mystery cache. There's a puzzle to solve or a challenge to accomplish before you can actually find the container. This category also has had some new nuances lately. There's now something called challenge caches, which means that you have to do other tasks like find 10 virtuals or find all the earth caches in Georgia or um, find 100 geocaches in one day or find a geocache every single day of the calendar year. Those are challenges. If that's the case, that's the puzzle or the mystery or the hard part to do. The container is actually easy. It's just like finding a traditional. Another type um, of puzzle or mystery cache is the type that they will publish really hard something or other that you have to figure out at home. Maybe you have to use a cipher. Maybe you you used to ha have to use some math or put together a puzzle or Sudoku or something like that to solve before you even go to find the cache and then you get coordinates as a result. Sometimes you have to go to a historical marker or a special place um, to find numbers on a sign or numbers from some people um, before you can actually find the coordinates for the final container. Those are all mystery caches. Multi-cache. You visit multiple locations and find additional clues or coordinates for the final cache. Sometimes you'll end up finding three or four containers in a row and only the last one has a log. They can cover grand distances. There's one in New York City that there are 36 stages with 36 containers and each container gives you the coordinates for the next container until finally at the end of the 36 you will have covered all of Central Park and finally get to sign the multi-cache. Earth cache is one of my favorite types. This is a virtual find. There's no container. It leads you to a hydrological water or geological rock location and lesson. You send answers to the cash owner, CO, to verify your find. In fact, there's a whole honor you can earn just with earth caches called geological geocaching. Yeah, you can get two for the price of one. Virtual caches. This also is a virtual find. There's no container. It leads you to a historical or special location. You send answers to the cash owner, CO, to verify your find. Letterbox, letterbox hybrid. These aren't very common. The final container has a stamp and ink that isn't swag. That means you don't take it home with you. You leave it with a container. Letterboxers, a related game, yes, there's an honor for that, can also use this game piece, this container. There may be fancy compass-based directions used to find the final container letterboxes. Where I goes. This cache uses a special app. You download a cartridge onto your phone or onto your um, your Garmin's actually have the Where I Go um, app already installed. You download the cartridge, then go from physical location to location to get extra steps or clues. You have to be within a certain feet of certain coordinates for the, for the app or cartridge to enable and tell you the next step. The final location has a container and log. Now this category has largely been replaced by a new adventure called Adventure Lab Caching. That's just started to take place since about 2019. Event Cache, this is an extra. If you don't remember this one, that's okay, but they're a lot of fun. 
You can hang out with other geocachers at organized area events. So, events, mega events, giga events, and even CETO events exist. They're all event caches. Requirement number seven is actually a type of cache. It's a type of event. What is meant by cash in, trash out, or CITO? This is an event type of cache that's held biannually. COs host parties to clean up an area. Trash bags, gloves, and other materials are necessary and are often provided by the cash owner. Also, CETO is a philosophy that we leave the forest or area cleaner than we find it. Take a trash bag with you. Even if you only brought out two things when you left from your geocaching expedition, you would leave the forest cleaner than it was. My guess is many of you live in an urban or suburban environment, and you may think, isn't geocaching something that's just in the, done in the forests and woods and trails? There are plenty of geocaches in those kind of locations, and those are actually a lot of fun to do. But sometimes geocaching is just as fun, and in fact, may be even more puzzling and interesting because of the unique places that urban geocachers have to hide their caches. They've got to keep thousands of muggles from discovering them, but yet make them accessible to geocachers. Join me as we watch a video. Okay, we have found a micro-sized cache. It is called a bison tube. Notice how small it is. It's about the size of my thumb. Notice how it blends in with the fence post here. Often you find these kind of caches in urban situations. We're in a shopping center on um, parking lot just behind um, the camera. And this is on the edge, but the hint said not in the trees. So we knew to look along the fence. We're looking for a micro, in this case, a bison tube. So another type of container, bison tube. We have a key magnet. This is a big green box. Key magnet in a big green box. And right underneath there, it's magnetic. And all of a sudden, you would never know that it was there. Okay, another urban hide. You see it's another bison tube, but notice this one's hanging, it's dark colored, hanging on a tree unless you knew it was there. There's no way you'd know. Zoom out, it's gone. Only a cashier knows. Requirement number six reads what items may be left in a cache, which may not. Okay, a general rule of thumb, if it's going to go bad or going to get squishy or can't handle wet very well, don't leave it in a cache unless it's in a Ziploc. But even then, don't leave food. Animals like your food. They can destroy caches. Okay, but here's the official way to say it. You can leave small things to trade for children, uh, little toys and other small objects, um, trade even, leave better, take nothing. Take nothing unless you leave something. Things not to leave, food, including sweets. These get soft and gooey and then leak and attract animals, uh, not a good idea. Don't leave advertising or promotional mat material. 
or anything that is not family friendly. Geocaching is a family friendly, family friendly activity. Make sure you help keep it that way. Picture I'm showing you right there is the original can of beans, old can of beans, original can of beans that was left in the original geocache in Portland, Oregon. Yeah, that was before they figured out that leaving food in geocaches was not a good plan. It still exists 20 years later. Blech. I'd like to show you a video of some of the stuff that my family and I leave in geocaches. The list is actually rather broad. A lot of it can be purchased at a Target or other type of store, Target, Oriental Trading Company online, um, Walmart. If you can think of party items, that kind of style of thing, or small cars, um, or stickers, or other small toys that can f fit in a variety of small containers that you've seen, that's probably the kind of thing that would make a good tradable item. Enjoy the video. Okay, cash and trade items can be different sizes. This is our cash and trade stack that we're about to put into our caching bag. You see that they come in all different sizes because there's all kinds of different, different cash containers. We chose some Christmas themed items just because they were on sale and because cash items often hang out in a box for a long time it just might be christmas by the time some kid finds this and trades for it maybe we make somebody's christmas special requirement number eight says demonstrate two ways of finding the location of a geocache in your area on a caching website or caching app okay first on the geocaching app you start off with a map view that shows everything. I'm showing this over Washington, D.C., which isn't too far from me, uh, but I didn't think you were too interested in the caches I had done in my own neighborhood, not to mention that kind of online that would not be safe. Um, but anyway, there's all the caches in Washington, D.C., uh, many of which you can see that I found. Now, once I'm in there, I can use the search if I use the search, the magnifying glass, I get this icon up on the top where it says location, geocache, trackable, or geotour. If I hit location, geocache, or geotour, each of them is a way to search for things near my home. Um, but that's more general. Geocache is helpful if I have a specific GC number that I'm looking for. Geotour, that's a lot of fun, but beyond the scope of this basic honor. Feel free to click it sometime. See if something's near you. One of the other ways is to click on the word filter. Um, actually, it's a funnel up here in your app, and you will get a screen that says filter. And one of the options you can click is geocaching types. I've chosen earth cache, virtual, and where I go and got rid of everything else. I also changed the difficulty and terrain to between one and three, so it makes it not quite as hard. I'm not looking for the ones on top of the towers. Um, or the ones that are super, super hard to find, kind of medium. As a result, notice how my map has changed from beginning to end. There aren't as many options. There are only the virtuals, earth caches, and where I goes. It's focused or filtered my results. Of course, I can then click on any of the icons in my app and read the description and hints just like I've shown you to do already. What about on the website? Go to geocaching.com, make sure you log in. Then in the search bar, the location bar here, type a location or use your home location. That's one of the job town menus. Then it will pop up a whole list down here. You can click on the map, find something nearby. Another way to find things that are of interest to you close by is to click on the hot buttons, events, most favorites, newest caches, those will all help you drill down to find specific types of caches near your location. Another way, of course, is to type your zip code right there. Type your zip code or town name. That will help as well. Requirement 11. Read and discuss Matthew 6, 19 through 21. 
and Jeremiah 29, 13, and determine their relevance to geocaching. Here's what the Bible texts say. Matthew 6, 19 and 20 says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, And you will seek me, referring to God, and find me, God, when you search for me with all your heart. Now, I want you to pause this video in just a moment after I read through the discussion questions. Simply pause on this screen, and whoever you're near, they've become your discussion partners as you discuss how these Bible texts tie in with geocaching. Here's some discussion starters. Number one says, how are these Bible texts like geocaching? And how are they different? Number two, what are examples of moth and rust that you find in geocaches? What's the comparison in our spiritual lives? Number three, what treasures in heaven can geocaching help you store up? And are there ways geocaching could keep you from storing up heavenly treasures? Hmm. Number four, some geocaches are really hard to find. Others are really easy. The difficulty rating tells you how hard it might be to find. What difficulty rating does Jesus declare he is? <laughs> yes, enjoy that discussion. And finally, number five, who is ultimately worth searching for in real life? Okay, pause it now. Talk about it. Okay, welcome back. We're on the home stretch. Requirement number 12, discuss safety concerns you should consider when geocaching. View the attributes of a nearby cache to identify caching hazards identified by cache owners. Like we've talked about already, be a critical thinker, be an aware hiker. Most of the dangers for geocaching are the same as those for backpacking or hiking. The good news is geocaches owners have usually taken the time to add some attributes to their listing to tell you what potential possible dangers might be. These are all of the possible attributes listed right here. No cache has all of these attributes. However, if you see ones for fallen rocks, like the one up here in the top row, or snakes, or potential death, ooh, that's kind of a serious one. Flashlight needed, that might change what you bring with you. Hunting season, that means you should know when hunting might be happening. Mining, that means there might be open mines that you might be, want to be careful and not get in there. Mines can crash and collapse and have deadly gases. Poisonous plants. Down on the next line. You have two very popular ones, at least here on the east coast of the United States, brambles and ticks. All of these might help make you aware so that you can prepare to geocache safely. Requirement number nine. Use the following features or their equivalent on a GPS receiver and website or caching app. Find by GC code. Find by location. Filter locations, compass, map directions, description, previous logs, hint. Several of these you have already seen as part of some of our video tutorials, but I want to make sure I have one more final video tutorial for you that's several minutes long that will help make sure you know what you need to know to go geocaching. Here we go. Here's the video. As you can see, this is our geocaching app and it shows us that we are only 36 feet away from a geocache 
the title is at the top geocache geo rick hates rocks but loves um boulders that could be a hint it's going to show us that we need to navigate to our right i'm going to switch to the map view and there on the map view you can see that there are some topo lines um, some river features, all that kind of stuff. We know we're close to a creek. We've got some topo lines going on. And this view shows that we're 89 feet away. Yeah, I walked away just a little bit. Um, up at the top in this view is also car directions. That's like if you were several miles from a cache and there was a road between you and it, it could drive you to the closest parking lot or whatever. There's often parking cords attached, which is really cool. And then at the top is also the map view. Um, so you've got car directions. This is the compass view right here, which would become map view when we're in compass. And there's some other options as well there. Um, this shows that it's traditional. See the green icon? Traditional meaning when I walk up to it, I should be able to find it. Though this view does not tell me what size the container is. Okay, now we're in the main view that is available in the geocaching app. The difficulty to find this cache is a 2.5. That's kind of medium. Terrain is 3.5, meaning I will have to leave the trail. It's a small container, so it's probably the size of a man's billfold or so. Lock and lock container is pretty common. This is the button to help me navigate in compass view or map view. This is where I'm going to sign a log in just a moment. Title you see here again, the GC number. Unlike the title, the GC number is distinct to this very cache. There is no other cache on the planet ever. Then it shows that it is a traditional find like we talked about already, available to premium members. So let's go. We're walking closer. There's a description about in the title about how he likes boulders but hates rocks. Well, as you can see, there's a huge boulder pile up ahead of us. So we are presuming that that title was a clue because there is no trail close by, really. We left the trail about 150 feet back. And in the summertime, there's lots of brambles and prickers here. There's a train rating of three and a half on this cache, if I remember right. Which usually means a bit off the beaten path. As you can see, we're getting up close to the rock pile. Let's dig around a little bit, and then we'll tune in again and see how we did. Come around to the back side of the rock pile. That's kind of common because they don't want to have a geocache accidentally found by somebody called a muggle. Muggle is a vocab term you need to know. Muggle means somebody that is not meaning to find it, but does anyway. As you can see, there's a piece of wood unnaturally stuck in that hole. That's a huge clue, visual clue. But notice, if you looked at this rock and just didn't know better, and didn't know that you were geocaching, man, nobody would notice. Okay, Alec, let's go make a grab. Okay, Alec, open it up and show us what's inside. Okay, now what does it always have, no matter what? It always has to have a log. This is the piece of paper that you'll sign with your geocaching name. It's not your real name. Like my geocaching handle is Pathfinder Mark. So that's what I we will be signing right there and along with the date. You see all those dates of other people that have found it? What's some other things that you see in this one, Alec? In this one there are a lot of tradable items. Tradable, yep, um, tradable. That's another one of our terms, isn't it? Yeah. Including a fake dollar, ten dollar bill. That's kind of funny. Boy, that's super sized. But all kinds of tradables, and tradable means if you like something you see in the container, you trade it for something you brought along of equal or greater value. Katie loves tradables. Okay, so here you go. See, it's a lock and lock, spray painted. Yeah, that helps it blend in. Lock and lock, keep it water sealed tight. If you ever decide to make your own, wait till you've been out in the field for a little while and figure kind of how they are before you try to find your own. Things that get wet or, or destruct when they get wet are not a good idea, but this container is a wonderful idea. And the log has a Ziploc, another great idea. So we've got some, some words we've used here. We've had um, tradable, log, container. Man, we're going to get this vocab solved. Um, Rider find log. 
This is how we go up and we set the log. We say found it, and here's where we're going to type in our message. Um, we want to let the um, geocache owner know enough about our find so that he knows we found it, but not so much that we give away information to other people. So we're not going to say such things as, oh, we found it under the big jumble of rocks, the third rock back. No, we don't say that kind of stuff. Keep it a little bit more generic than that, but we could talk about the wonderful weather it was today, who we found it with, um, what shape, condition the container was, um, whether we traded toys, um, tradable items vocab word there those kinds of things as you can see I'm typing out that I found the cache in great shape and that we signed the log and then we hit it where we had found it now, that's always a good place to thing to do is hide it when you found it unless some animal has dropped it out in the middle of nowhere and it needs hidden back where it actually belonged of course um, we're saying that we out on a bit of a geocaching adventure today because we found 10 that's great and then we're going to finish it off by saying TFTC, thanks for the cash. There's a little heart down at the bottom that if we want, if we thought this was a really awesome cash and we were a premium member, we would click on the heart. If we wanted to attach a photo, we would click on the photo, then take a photo. You can do selfies or a shot of yourself. Just don't give away the caching position when you do so. This is a found it log. There was obviously the option there to also do a write a note or to do a needs maintenance log. For example, if you found the log with all kinds of junk, um, super wet, super soaked, mold, cracked open, any of those kind of things, you would do a uh, needs maintenance log so that the cash owner would know that it needed help. Okay, here's evidence that we have entered it and it has gone to the website. Now we're ready to go find another. Notice the smileys, yep, vocab word here show us which of the caches in the area we have actually found and again this is another cache notice that this is a puzzle cache it has the blue with the white question mark um, has the title and cache owner and difficulty terrain the difficulty on challenge caches which this is a type of meaning the container is actually there at the location at the coordinates see those coordinates um, but that you have to have succeeded in doing something before they let you log your find online. Um, and we'll go more into detail on that. This one has been found 15 times. Two people have considered it a favorite. You may notice that this is a slightly different interface than the one we used before, that's true. This is Cashly, um, another geocaching app that, especially if you're a premium member, um, it's really worth your while. It has deeper maps, a lot more information, a lot more tools that you can use to customize your experience than the standard free geocaching map. Definitely worth the $4.99. Okay, so let's look at the description. I hit description. Here it tells me what I need to do in order to log the find. This one's simple. I have to have found 10 other challenge caches somewhere in the universe. It will even, if you hit the Project GC button, it will even open up a new window that you log in there. Project GC is the same login as geocaching.com and it will check to see whether you have qualified and if you have then you can sign this log after you find the physical log some other things that you find here hint this would give you some clues about where to find it if you needed the hint usually you try to find it without the hints at least for a little while logs you can click on that and see a whole bunch of logs of other people who have found it and any comments they left it also tells you the last time somebody found it which wasn't too many days ago personal note um, is where um, you s can store information that only you can see. Um, really helpful if you're on a multi-stage, multi-cache, and of course any images. Sometimes those are helpful as a hint too. Sometimes they can be a dead giveaway and way too much information. You have to be wise with those. That's pretty much it. Mystery puzzle that is of the challenge type um, with a different interface called Cashly. But anyway, hopefully you enjoyed um, our overall adventure and checking out some geocaching apps to do geocaching. Cashly is only available for iPhone players. The geocaching app is available for both the Droid platform as well as um, the iPhone platform. Okay, there's another type of geocache. These are, these are regular sized or normal caches, but these are slightly unusual. Bird houses, they're not really bird houses. And this one here, you have to get into with a little bit of a snap. 
this one's unusual. This is part of a series called um, gadget or pseudo gadget caches. Once we get in, we'll show you so more. Inside, <laughs> it's called evolution of a rest stop, and inside you have a man using an outhouse. This is at a rest area, and the container that you sign bison tube, but it's attached to a toilet paper roll. Boy, those are gold during COVID-19 now, aren't they? There's the bison tube. You screw that open and sign the little log inside. Are you ready? Let me say it again. Are you ready? Oh, yes, you are. It is your turn to go do it. Now, maybe you are working alone. Maybe you're able to go geocaching with somebody who's a geocacher already. That's ideal. Maybe COVID-19 is over and you're able to arrange time with your unit, with somebody to lead the way, whatever the case. Your goal is to find three geocaches in your area, at least one of which must be a regular or traditional cache. Maybe you'll have a virtual earth cache and traditional. Maybe three traditionals. Maybe you'll try a multi or an easy puzzle cache. For starters, stick with the low difficulty and terrain ratings. Don't be as scared of the terrain as you are of the difficulty. Terrain simply means it's not on the trail. Go have fun. You're a pathfinder. But now it's your turn. Go find that cache or three. Download the app. Go caching today. Instructors. Of course, you can find this video. You may have already found this video at YouTube on the NAD Pathfinders channel. Make sure you subscribe. That way you can continue to receive top-notch resources as we create them for you. The worksheet for this honor is found at bit.ly geocaching honor worksheet. The slideshow download, if you wish to modify it for your own personal uses, feel free. Um, this slideshow can be downloaded at bit.ly geocaching slideshow. And of course, wiki.pathfinders.org. We couldn't do it without them. We are so glad that all of the contributors there have provided so many wonderful answers for this and many others of the Pathfinder AY honors. God bless. Let's go geocache.